ever scrolled through those vacation rentals online, you know, on Airbnb or whatever, and thought, hold on, is this whole town just Airbnbs? Shouldn't people like actually live here? Yeah, yeah. That, my friend, is the crux of today's deep dive. I like it. We're diving headfirst into this letter. People are fired up about these proposed changes to Chelan County's short-term rental rules. They're saying these changes are missing the point big time. See, and what's so interesting about this is it's Chelan County, right? It's this microcosm of what's happening all over the place. Like we've seen Airbnb and VRBO, all these platforms just explode. Yeah. It's made travel more accessible, which is great, but it's also brought up all these questions about, well, what happens to... You a place. Yeah, 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 exactly. What happens to affordability? What happens to the character of a community? I think that's what this letter is getting at. Yeah, totally. It's like this weird tension between, yay, travel, and wait, where did everyone go? And get this, the letter drops this like, Kind of shocking stat. 65% of Chelan County's short-term rentals mm. owned by people who don't even live there full-time. That's And it speaks to exactly what we're talking about. Because think about it, right? If you've got a whole house, a whole unit that would normally be available for, say, a family to come in and rent long-term, and now it's just listed as a vacation rental, that's one less piece of housing stock for the people who are living and working in that community. Right. And it's not like people aren't moving to these places, right? People want to live exactly. in Chelan County. So the demand is high. The supply is shrinking. And what happens? The price goes up, up, up. And then you get into these issues of affordability. And suddenly, people who've lived there for generations, people who work in the shops downtown, they can't afford to live there anymore. Totally. It's like a double whammy, right? You're potentially crising out the people who give the place its character, and then the place starts to lose its character. Exactly. Which is what makes this 2021 code so interesting. Yeah. Because the letter's really hammering home that this code was designed specifically to address those issues, mm -hmm. right? Protect housing for the residents, keep things, you know, somewhat affordable. Absolutely. It was trying to strike that balance. You know, you don't want to stifle the tourism industry completely. It's a huge part of these communities. Hmm. But you also don't want to completely erode the fabric of the community in the process, right? Right. So the 2021 code came in, and it put some limits on things. They said, okay, we're going to limit how many short-term rentals there can be, especially the ones that aren't owned by full-time residents. Yeah. And they were particularly strict about that in residential areas, like the areas with mostly single-family homes. But then they said, okay, if you live in your house and you want to rent out, say, a spare room, a guest house, you've got a little more flexibility there. Again, it was all about finding that balance. So it sounds like these proposed changes are making people nervous that that balance is tipping too far in the other direction. Like, are we just going to see even more short-term rentals if these changes go through? Well, and that's the concern, right? They're worried that... Suddenly, their street, their neighborhood mm. is just going to feel like one big hotel. Yeah. And it's not just about the numbers, yeah. right? It's about that sense of community. Mm -hmm. The people you see at the grocery store, the folks you chat with at the park, that disappears when everyone's just passing through. Totally. And the letter does mention that groups like, you know, the local chambers of commerce, short-term rental owners, they're the ones pushing for these changes. And their main argument is what? A drop in lodging tax revenue since that 2021 code went into effect. Okay, so lodging taxes. This is interesting because it gets into the nitty gritty of how these places fund themselves, right? Yeah. So you know how when you stay in a hotel, you get that extra little line item on your bill, the lodging tax? Right. Same thing with short-term rentals. And that money, it goes back to the city or the county, and it's often used to fund things like, you know, promoting tourism, which is kind of ironic, or even just maintaining the things that tourists love, like, I don't know, fixing up the park, improving the beaches, that kind of thing. Right. Right. So it's not insignificant money, but... But is the decline in lodging tax, is it all because of the 2021 code? Or is there anything else going on, like the economy, people traveling less, whatever? Does the letter get into that at all? That's always the million-dollar question, isn't it? <laughs> it's rarely just one thing, right? And yes, while the letter focuses heavily on the code's impact, mm -hmm. you know, the reality is it's always more nuanced. There could be other economic factors at play. Right. So it's like follow the money, but also who's not at the table, mm -hmm. which I think is the real heart of the letter's argument. Yes. Protecting Chelan County residents, mm -hmm. making sure they can actually afford to live there. That should be priority number one, even if it means, you know, maybe losing out on some of that lodging tax revenue. It really is a classic case of what we see in so many places that mm -hmm. rely on tourism. Mm -hmm. How do you balance, you know, how do you walk that tightrope between welcoming visitors, reaping those economic benefits, 
but also safeguarding the community, mm -hmm. the people who make that community what it is. It's about sustainability in the broadest sense of the word. It's really tough. I don't envy Chelan County officials right now. That's a real head scratcher. But for everyone listening, it gets me thinking, what would you do? Imagine you lived in Chelan County. Affordable housing or tourism dollars? It's a tough question. It's no easy answer. No easy answers, but it's a question worth asking. Yeah. Because ultimately, whatever they decide, yeah. this is going to shape Chelan County for years to come. And that's a really important thing for everyone to think about, not just in Chelan County, but everywhere. It's a sign of the times, for sure. For sure. Well, on that note, I think we'll wrap up our deep dive for today. Thanks for listening, everybody.